This is eHobbyist blog, a log of electronics hobbyist activities aimed at city dwellers who have limited space, limited money, and limited time. My name is Neil. Welcome. During this video, we will continue developing the breadboarded prototype of the negative tracking power supply. What I've got here is a split screen diagrams. Left is a circuit diagram for the negative tracking power supply. On the right, we have the breadboard layout. And what I wanted to do is establish these animated arrows so that when I discuss the object on the circuit diagram, I can use an arrow to point it out, and there is a corresponding arrow on the right side that will point out the same object on the breadboard layout. This ensures that the breadboard layout is indeed an accurate implementation of the circuit diagram. Starting with the positive terminal, this is the output from the variable positive power supply, and it is the input to the negative tracking power supply. It's what the negative supply is tracking. Then we have orange wire, which is connecting that input to R1, the input resistor. Together with R2, the feedback resistor, it establishes the basic amplification of the overall inverting amplifier. R1 and R2 should be equal. The trimmer, R3, is there to ensure that. That brown wire is connecting the trimmer center tap to the inverting input of the operational amplifier. Then we have the non-inverting input to the operational amplifier, which is connected to R4, the current balancing resistor going to ground. The violet wire is the output of the negative tracking regulator. It should be precisely the negative of the input plus terminal. R5 is the voltage offset trimmer. Those green wires connect one end of the R5 voltage trimmer to its associated IC pin. Pin number four is V minus, and that's the op amp negative power supply voltage, also connected to a violet line, in turn connected to a diode, which establishes another half wave rectifier. And we have a set of capacitors filtering the negative power supply of the op amp. Pin 4 is the negative power supply pin for the op amp. Pin 7 is the positive power supply pin for the op amp. That is in turn connected to a gray set of connections, which goes to the output of the 7805 regulator. VN plus is uh, input to the 7805 regulator. The 7805 pin 3 is the input power for that and is in turn connected to C1, which I have as a 0.33 microfarad capacitor. If they want one, I'll put it there. Then I have C2, 0.01. C3 is a 1 and C4, 100 microfarad capacitors filtering the output of the 7805 and the positive power supply pin of the op amp. The 741 amplifier pin 6 is the output connected to a yellow jumper in turn connected to R7. Q2 is the first stage of that Zikli pair PNP transistor 2N2905 and Q1 is the 2N3055, which is the second stage, the NPM stage of the Zikli pair. The Q2 emitter is connected to orange trace, as is the Q1 collector. Then we have Q1 base. R12 is the leakage limiting resistor for Q1. The blue wire attached to R12 goes to the V minus input coming from the rectifier filter module. We have Q3, which is the current limiting transistor. R10 and R11 provides the variability of a current limiting. Together with the R8 and optionally R9, they establish the total current limit. C8 is a 100 microfarad capacitor, C9 is a 1 microfarad, and C10 is a 0.01 microfarad capacitor. R6 is a load resistor. D2, the diode protects polarity reversal. 
D3 protects the output from being more negative than the input. And here we have a missing jumper that was supposed to be going from the emitter of the 3906 current limiting transistor on up to the output of the negative tracking power supply. This is what makes this whole thing worth it. What I have here is the rectifier filter board for the external power supply. And what I need to do is connect the output intended for the complementary power supply to associated binding posts as a temporary measure to facilitate development. I'm going to strip the ends of these wires and attach spade terminals. Just crimp them on. This is temporary. In the normal course of events, these wires would be soldered into the corresponding complementary power supply boards. I'm loosening up the binding posts. When I designed this, I wanted to get the binding posts as close to the edge as is possible without causing electrical problems. In retrospect, they really should be moved uh, further away from the edge by about half an inch because I can't get nut drivers in there, which is an annoyance. And so to tighten these things up, I have to use an open-ended wrench, which is an annoyance. Yes, if I haven't mentioned it before, this is truly an annoying annoyance. I've tried various and sundry gimmicks to get some socket wrench or act as if in there, and it just doesn't work. I'm tightening up these terminals. There's a blue wire that is going to be positive for the complementary power supply and will be connected to a variable positive power supply board. There is the white wire, which is the negative. Now that I've got the terminals connected, there's another odds and ends thing that need to be taken care of. I need to solder 51 ohm resistor onto the 50 ohm pot that I'm going to be using to adjust the current limiting. I'm chipping all over myself, trying to just crimp the wires and then later solder them. I like to get the components solidly crimped on before soldering to keep the stress off of the solder joint. This is a pen of ice junior, I think. Applying liquid flux. Now solder. Soldering iron is set to a relatively high temperature. It's about 350 degrees just to get the job done. Proper way to do this is to heat one side and apply the solder to the other side. I'm not completely proper in my solder technique. Let's get this off the vise and I want to get the flux off. I mean, in theory, I could just leave it on. There's no problem. This is the kind of flux that can be left in place. I'm using a anti-static brush to clean it up. Let me attach the current limiting pot to the breadboard.
This is Q1 of the MJE3055 transistor. I'm attaching its uh, associated leads. Wow, there's one little trick shot I did in there that I didn't realize where a wire moves itself. And this is the problem jumper that I discovered when comparing the breadboard layout to the printed circuit board. What I need to do next, and a lot of these little trivial things that I need to take care of before I can begin to test this thing, I want to make sure that I indeed have proper voltage coming out of the uh, rectifier filter board. I'm looking at the positive end of the complementary power supply. This is the voltage coming out of the rectifier filter board. For the single ended supply it was 28.36 and here it's 28.55, fine, let's take a look at the negative part of that. It was 28.56 positive and here we have a negative. Twenty-eight point five three five four five six. Okay, that's uh, that's pretty good. It's, these things are well balanced. Now I'll connect the power supply strips to the breadboard uh, proper. And I've still got a ways to go with this thing, but we're getting there. I hope to be able to test this this uh, this go around, but I got hung up in video animation. In this video, I spent entirely too much time futzing around with split screen animated synchronized arrows. Oh, oh, come on, that's futz, F U T Z. Really. I crimped spade lugs to the rectifier filter module outputs for the dual complementary power supply. I temporarily connected the rectifier filter outputs to the corresponding binding posts. I tested the rectifier filter voltages which will be used as inputs to test negative tracking power supply prototypes. In the next video, we will continue developing the negative tracking power supply while trying to steer clear of video animation. If you like this video and the idea of the channel, click on the YouTube thumbs up icon. If you want to be notified as to when the next video is available, click on the YouTube subscribe button. If you want to suggest future directions or topics, make corrections to published videos, or voice your opinion on related matters, then leave a YouTube comment. If you want to see supplementary material that cannot be easily presented in video form, such as high-res graphics, files in different formats, lists of references, uh, go to the corresponding website. Until the next time, good day.